soft refuge free from all hate you're welcome here come participate in creating sanctuary come you've been hurt by church rejection there's no need to pretend perfection we're a wounded healing loving collection creating sanctuary Till a circle is formed Then we open up to receive each new one Whether you come from near or afar You're welcome here Just as you are To our sanctuary To our sanctuary We're creating sanctuary Accept the love that we share You're free to struggle, question and dare God is in you, God is everywhere Creating sanctuary We move together till this circle is formed And we open up to receive each new one Whether you come from near or afar You're welcome here just as you are to our sanctuary to our sanctuary we're creating sanctuary Bring your pain, form with us a safe haven chain, sing with us a simple refrain, creating sanctuary. We move together till a circle is formed, and we open up to receive each new one. Whether you come from near or far, you're welcome here. Just as you are To our sanctuary To our sanctuary We're creating sanctuary We move together till a circle is formed And we open up to receive each new one Whether you come from near or afar You're welcome here just as you are to our sanctuary to our sanctuary we're creating sanctuary Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be with you this morning. Um, I hope that you have had a good weekend and stayed dry. It's been a lot of rain. We've been in and out of baseball games and trying to stay dry in the midst of that. But I hope you have had a relaxing weekend, and I'm glad you're here today. We have a full day of worship experiences with this morning and then this evening service as well, um, which I'll note again with some details at the end of worship. Today is our last Sunday of our stewardship series. Um, so we're talking about restore today. And um, I hope you've been following along in the newsletter um, and taking advantage of the reflection prompts we've been providing, as well as watching the videos from our stewardship team um, they responded to those prompts. We've already shared videos from Tim Hancock and uh, Tony Castanon and Daphne Sajovic. And then um, probably tomorrow you'll get our fourth one on Restore, which is a writing piece uh, by Del Candler. So I'm thankful for those folks that have been on our stewardship team this year and for sharing their own money story or pieces of their story. I hope you've been kind of exploring that as well. 
Um, and, and that has encouraged you, um, in this time of commitment to our church again, uh, we'll put the link in the, um, the chat later, but just a reminder that we are asking that you turn in your, um, commitment cards by June 30th. So that's just three days away. Uh, remember that this is more than money. It's about committing our, um, ourselves through relationship, um, through presence, through, um, our gifts and our talents, our time, as well as our financial, um, monies. And so I hope that everyone will participate in that. It's a way for us to kind of, um, take part in a ritual, even though we are, um, at home and, and we're not doing it in person, like we usually would in worship, it can still be something that connects us. So we'll share that link again. It's also been in all the newsletters, but, uh, please take time to fill that out. It also helps us to plan, um, for the year. And with that, let me remind you that after worship today, uh, we will have a short community meeting where we vote on the 2021, 2022 budget that starts on July 1st. So, um, I've been in the building some the last two weeks, particularly this week. Um, at first it felt like a vacation. I'm not even joking. Like it felt like a vacation to be back in the building. I think I'm really tired of staring at the same walls of my house. Um, and there were just so many people around, which was wild. I mean, not that many people really, but, um, different people were there getting, uh, the, the building projects underway or overseeing the, the contractors we hired. And there were a few of us in the office. We even had, um, kind of a mini staff meeting for a few of us in person to work on some things, um, and worship, uh, some of the worship team have been in working on the technical side of things, getting the building ready in the sanctuary. So we can both be, uh, in person and online for those that are still home. So there is just a lot, a lot going on. Um, and I know that you have, well, you've hopefully seen, um, the projected dates for us to be back in the building. We are still going to go slow. Um, if you've been watching the news, then you know that there's a really scary Delta variant out there um, that is even more contagious um, and that people with vaccines can carry with no symptoms and give to other people. And so we want to be careful around those in our congregation who are immunosuppressive as well as our children. Anybody under 12 can't get their vaccine yet. So um, right now our plan is to have the band back in the building on the 11th, and then we're going to let in folks that are non-Zoomers and those non-Zoomers are folks that you don't see on Sunday morning that aren't, that aren't comfortable coming online with the technology and such. Um, and then at the beginning of August, we'll start to have people come in the building. Um, and closer to that August first day, we will send out a way that you can reserve your spot online. Um, eventually within that month, we hope to get everyone in there, but we're going to go slow. We're very aware that our entry points into the sanctuary are small. They're very small and narrow. And so that's one of the areas we have to be most careful of that we're not overloading them um, and risking spreading the virus right now. So we're going to continue to be cautious. We are eager to be back together, um, but we want to uh, keep the safety of everyone at the top of the list. Um, and, and it won't be long before we're seeing each other again. So thank you to all the folks that are doing so much to get the building ready. Um, and I'm excited to be back with you there soon. And tonight we will be together outside for our outdoor service at six and the baby shower before at five 15. So lots of great things going on. I hope you can take this time to, um, to continue to open yourself to new stories about money, um, to changing some of those old narratives that might've been harmful or holding you back and to opening yourself up to something new, something that God desires for us. Uh, we're going to, we're going to talk some more about that today. Um, and then next week we'll, we'll start a whole new series that'll last us about eight weeks where we're going to talk about the Bible and, uh, what do we think about the Bible and what place does it have in our lives and how can we embrace the Bible again and those stories, um, after we've gone, gone through some deconstruction. Um, so it's going to be a good series. So, uh, let's worship today. Just be present to this time. It's good to be with you all. Please join us in this responsive reading. In worship, we tell a story. A story of an unfettered love that changed the world. In worship, we tell a story. A story of how we live 
and how we long to live. In worship, we tell a story. Because we are forgetful people. So may we remember who we are. May we release the narratives that trap us. May we reimagine this world to see what God sees. And may we work toward restoration. It's all that easy and it's all that hard. Let us worship holy God. up with your love and tenderness we've come to lift our hearts and we've come to confess our brokenness and our pain spirit open up our eyes to your beauty and your grace may we see your reflection Every stranger's face here today in this song, feel your gentle touch and your power. Tear down the walls of our fear and our pride. Help us to live while we In lives of praise. Spirit, open up our minds as we seek to understand how to live like Jesus with our feet and our hands. Walk the road you prepared. Spirit, open up our hearts to a world outside this place, a world of broken lives in need of your embrace. Teach us, Lord, how to care with our lives. Answer prayer. Tear down the walls of our feet. Help us to live while we're alive. We offer you our songs, our grateful hands we raise. We offer up our broken lives of praise. Tear down the walls of our fear and our pride. Help us to live while we're alive. We offer you our songs, our grateful hands we raise. We offer up our broken lives of praise. Tear down the walls of our fear and our pride. Help us to live while we're alive. We offer you our songs, our grateful hands we raise. We offer our broken lives of
Don't be afraid to share Cause there is always more where This comes from Gifts come from The never ending source Never ending source This river never runs dry Divine abundance is why We can share our gifts and our love Because there's more than enough Sometimes all we can see is scarcity How will I measure up? What if I'm not enough? What if I give too much away? Truth is there is enough for everyone When we are free to risk Trusting that God's got this Love multiplies our gifts Again and again and again and again Don't be afraid to share Cause there is always more where This comes from Gifts come from The never ending source Never ending source This river never runs dry Divine abundance is why We can share our gifts and our love Because there's more than enough There is more than enough There is more than enough All right, we're ready for kids time. Let's see where our friend Beth is. There she is, let's get her unmuted. Good morning. I'm gonna share my screen. Are you gonna turn the kids' cameras on? Yes, we are working on that. Perfect, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. All right, great. That's great. Well, good morning, kids. It's good to see you guys. Um, I have been thinking a lot about generosity. And so the last song we sang just talked a little bit about not being afraid to be generous. Um, I wanted to remind you of some of the lyrics. It said, don't be afraid to share because there's always enough. Because, um, wow, sorry, I lost my place. Don't be afraid to share because there's always more where this comes from. Gifts come from the never ending source. This river never runs dry. Divine abundance is why we can share our gifts and our love because there is more than enough. So to get ready for children's time today, I checked out a whole stack of books in the library, didn't I, Shadow? Mm -hmm. Yep, and I looked off through them and I learned a lot. And one thing I learned was that there's different ways to be generous. And I wanted to share one of these books with you today. And it is called Generosity. And it's by Cynthia Amoroso and Daniel Jacklin. Move you guys over. There we go. So... Generosity is giving to others without expecting something in return. When you're generous, you want to help others. You're not thinking of yourself. You give, you give because you want others to feel good. Generosity is a way of being kind to others. So you can be generous with your time. You had a busy day at school and you may have a lot to think about. You have a lot to do. And then you notice that your friend is sad. You're really busy, but you still take time to talk to her. You ask her if you can help. You show generosity by taking time to listen. Spending time with people can really help them out. So you can also be generous with your food. You've bought some cookies in your lunchbox and your friend sits next to you. She does not have any cookies. The cookies you bought are your very favorite kind. You would like to eat them all, but you know your friend likes them too. You show generosity by sharing your cookies with her. Sometimes generosity means giving away things we like. You can also be generous with your things. You love to draw with markers and you have a lot of markers in different colors. Other kids in your class do not have as many as you do. You can show generosity by sharing your markers. Now you can all have a better time drawing. It feels good to share what you have. So you can also be generous with your money and that may be the first thing you think about when you think about generosity. So you've been saving your money to buy a new toy. You cannot wait to get it. Then you learn in school about kids who don't have enough. They do not have enough money for warm clothes. They do not have enough food. You would like to help them. You show your generosity by donating some of your money. 
You can show generosity by sharing money with people in need. You can also be generous with your knowledge. Are you really good at something? Maybe you can sing, or maybe you know how to dance or draw, or maybe you read really well. You can show generosity by sharing your knowledge. You can help someone else learn these things. Teaching a younger kid can be fun and it can make a big difference. Helping others learn is a way to show generosity. You can be generous at home. There are many ways to show generosity at home. You might not like your sister's favorite TV show. You can let your sister watch it anyway. Maybe feeding the dog is not your job. You can feed the dog anyway. Showing generosity is not just for friends and classmates, it is for family too. Being generous to your family is nice. And this one I think might be the most important way to be generous. You can be generous with your feelings. Maybe some people seem different from you. Maybe they do not do or say things you, that you do not like. It might be easy to be mean to them. You could get upset. You could say, I do not like you, but you show generosity instead. You try to understand their side. You give them a fair chance. Generosity means not being too hard on people. And sometimes at our house, we call this giving people the benefit of the doubt. So that's another way you can be generous. Showing generosity means sharing with others. Sharing with people can really help them out. It makes their lives better. It makes your life better too. I want you to think about how you can show generosity today. Generosity makes the world a better place. So. I'm going to stop sharing, but I just want to thank you guys for coming to Children's Time today. I hope you have a great Sunday, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of you tonight at the outdoor service. So have a great day. Restoring God, you have always been in the business of beginning again with us, of restoration and return. First, you breathed life into dust. Then you guided brother back to brother after years apart. You sent prophets when the people lost their way. You fed the hungry and healed the sick. You let the little children come to you. You forgave us from the cross. And then you return to remind us of our call. You have always been in the work of restoration, of seeing us, claiming us, loving us, and inviting us to return to you. Today, we come to you in prayer, asking that once more, you will restore us, all of all of us. Restore our narratives about who we are, the truth. Restore our actions toward one another, to love. Restore our dreams for this world and to your dream for us. Holy God, you've always been in the business of beginning again with us, of restoration and return. We trust that you hear our prayer.
as we go into this time of um, blessing our offering, um, I want to also bless our commitment cards, whether you've turned it in or uh, still intend to, um, recognizing that this is an act, this is a covenant between all of us to continue to um, care for and provide for um, and be a part of the ministries of our church, both those things that happen within our doors and beyond our doors and the way God is moving and working. So will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the many ways that you have blessed us. When we look back a year ago, as we were entering that fiscal year, we were so in the dark about what the year would bring. And many of us were filled with fear because we knew the reality of churches trying to survive in this pandemic. But you have blessed us and our congregation has blessed you and we have given abundantly and done more than we ever intended to do, continuing to stay together as community and as church, giving to other organizations and the important work that they are doing to support individuals and families right now and helping us repair our buildings so we're able to return to it. There are just so many ways that we have continued to thrive in this last year, despite what is going on. And as we enter into this next fiscal year, I pray for your continued blessings upon our commitment, upon our faithfulness to one another, to our church and to you. We offer our gifts this morning but we also make this commitment for the next year, a commitment to one another and to you, that we are in this together, that we will stand by one another, that we will do the work, the hard work, the difficult work, the joyous work, whatever comes our way, we will go at it together. And we're so thankful that we have that opportunity to do that, that we have one another. And so much of our giving rises out of that, out of the blessing that this community that you have nurtured is to each one of us and to our families. So bless our covenant with one another today. Bless this relationship that we have this connection that we also want to foster with the larger community, with our neighbors. May we not be scared to think or talk about money, but see its usefulness, how it is a resource, so that we may see to the well being of all your children. Though we may be a small part of things, help us to remember and to see that we too play an important role in creating and nurturing your kingdom here and now. Amen. To us Buscado ni sabios ni ricos, tan solo quiere que yo te siga, Señor. Es mi raro los ojos y sonriendo has dicho mi nombre. Smiling, have 
spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You know so well my possession. reading from John 21, 1 through 14. Later, Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, or the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's son, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. They set out in a boat, but throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't recognize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, friends, haven't you caught any fish? They answered him, no. He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they did, and there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was stripped for work and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore it was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn, even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus took the bread and gave it to them. 
and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Well, let me, let me begin by saying that the, uh, my, my interpretive key, which I think is faithful to the gospel, is the well-being of the neighbor. So in, uh, in the book of Galatians, uh, uh, Paul writes that love of the neighbor is the whole sum of the gospel. Shoot. Now, if you take that, then if you take any of these uh, things like money, time, all of that, uh, the question about money is how is our money connected to the reality of the neighbor? And that has to do with how we earn our money, how we invest our money, how we spend our money, how we save our money, and how we give our money away. If you take the neighbor out of the equation, uh, then you can earn money any way you want, and you can keep it all for yourself, and you can give none away. Etc. 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 We don't have to talk about it in church. That's right. Yeah. So mainly the church doesn't talk about money, except in the stewardship season when it wants to raise the church budget. When in fact, the church's stake in a gospel handling of money doesn't pertain basically to the church budget. It pertains to our practice of money in the public political economy. So that's some pretty good stuff from Walter Brueggemann. Um, he is one of my favorite biblical scholars. Um, but we're going we're gonna to come back to more of what he said later. But for now, I just want to invite you to kind of remember his point about how the gospel is about the well-being of the neighbor and how that includes our money. But first, I want to ask you a question. Um, have you ever gone back to something or someone because it felt familiar or safe or convenient. And sometimes going back to something ends up working out because the person or the circumstances have changed. But, but I'm not talking about those times because I think those are rare. Um, think about the other times. Have you ever returned to a relationship that you were unhappy in even though nothing had changed? Maybe you just hoped it had or you had convinced yourself that it wasn't as bad as you remembered. Or maybe you went back to a job that wasn't good for you, that, that didn't treat you well, but you went back because it was all you could find or because you were scared to try something new. Or it might've been church. You went back hoping things would be different, but found that you'd landed right back where you were before. I'm talking about other churches, of course, not Crossroads. I'm sure you could come up with some other examples of things that you have returned to, um, even though nothing had changed and it still wasn't working for you. Sometimes we return to things because it's what seems simplest or we're afraid to break out and, and try something different, or we don't have enough confidence in ourselves to believe we deserve more or are capable of more. Or we go back to something that is familiar, that is safe, that is convenient. That's what happens with the disciples in this story. Jesus has died. Um, he's been resurrected too, and, and they have even seen him. But all of this is just pretty confusing. Um, I mean, can you imagine how they must have felt? Their whole world had been turned upside down. And how are they to make any sense of all this? Sure, they'd seen him resurrect people from the dead, but, but they weren't expecting this. And even though he was resurrected, he kept saying that he would be leaving them again. 
you kind of wonder if they were like pinching themselves a lot to see if they were really awake or, or stomping around to see if the ground was really there below them. The things they knew of the world were very wonky right now. And so they went back to something familiar. They went back out on the boat. Were they there to stay? I don't know. We always kind of assume so that in their state of confusion, they decided to return to their old line of work as fishermen. But I suppose they could have just been going out to do something familiar and comfortable so they could think. I've definitely been known to return to a place where I feel at ease when I need to get my bearings straight. But whatever the reason, they're back fishing. But it's not going so well. Something has changed. Is it the fish? Is it them? What is it that's not working? Of course, that's when Jesus enters the story. The disciples don't even realize it is him yet but they heed his instructions to drop the nets on the other side of the boat as if it could be that simple. And yet it is, or is it? Might just be a little Jesus magic working there. The net fills up so much that they can barely haul it aboard. It's then that one of the disciples recognizes Jesus and alerts Simon Peter. Maybe, maybe it was the miracle that the disciple recognized Jesus in. And one of the funnier moments in the New Testament happens, Simon Peter, remembering he is naked, I don't know why the heck he is fishing naked. I'm, I know I'm not a fisherman, but that's not something I'm familiar with. But he throws on some clothes so as to be modest, I suppose. And then he jumps in the sea to swim to Jesus before the boat can reach shore. It's kind of a funny scene if you try to picture it in your head. And then they have what I love to refer to as a breakfast fish fry on the beach. We started this stewardship series a couple of weeks ago with the story of the last meal that they shared when Jesus broke the bread and offered the cup to all of his friends, even those who would betray or deny him. And now we're at their next and truly last meal together, a fish fry on the beach. So what happens next? Do they go back out on the boat after Jesus departs? Do they return to their own li old lives, even though Jesus has appeared, reminding them of what it means to be in communion with him? We know they don't. The scripture goes on to that memorable line when Jesus tells Peter three times, feed my sheep. And of course, that's just what the disciples go on to do. Jesus directs the disciples back onto this new path they discovered while following him. One that has great purpose in feeding God's sheep, in introducing God's love more fully into the world, in caring for the well-being of one's neighbor. It feels to that, it feels that at this fish fry, the disciples' purpose is restored to them. They are brought back to the world and to the work that Jesus has called them to. What does this have to do with money and stewardship? It's a fair question to ask. Or you might be wondering if I'm going to have to work some magic like Jesus did with those fish to connect the two. But here we go. Over the last few weeks, we've been exploring our money story. And we've talked about remembering those stories, those narratives, particularly the parts of them that might not work for us anymore, or that it might be doing more harm than good. And last week, we talked about releasing those harmful stories and perspectives so that we could begin to reimagine an economy which does not impoverish the already poor and ask ourselves how our giving and our stewardship might be a part of that. And this morning, we close with our last word, restore. While we have to reimagine in this particular time, this pandemic, what stewardship looks like for us, the foundation is still the same. We've just gotten far away from it in the church as we've tried to keep the institution afloat. 
giving, sacrificing, tithing, leaving parts of your field unharvested. It was always meant to be used for the good of the neighbor, for the good of God's kingdom. Our giving praises God as it is used for the betterment of God's children and the purpose of the gospel, which Walter Brueggemann spoke to earlier in the video, breaking down to the well-being of the neighbor. That's what we're told to do, right? To love our neighbors. When the foundation of our money story is restored to that purpose, to that perspective, our giving becomes one not of obligation or guilt or shame, but one of joyfulness and compassion and kindness and generosity. Our stewardship becomes a bit like that net, strong enough to hold 153 fish. Our stewardship becomes its own net, able to help support and provide for many who need help finding their way in the world, finding their footing once again. It helps create this new economy that God desires for the world. And we have the opportunity to become co-creators of a world where money is more evenly spread so that there is enough for everyone and no one is without. Now that's an intimidating thing to reach for. We all would probably agree that it's God's desire and we want it to, but how the heck do we get there? How can we individually or even as a church make a difference in this? I think Brueggemann's questions in the video are appropriate for us to leave with. So I'm going to encourage you to write these down and to sit with them this week. I'll put them in the chat afterwards as well. These are good questions for us individually, and they're also good questions for us as a church. So remembering that money is always connected to the well-being of our neighbor. Restore that as a foundational perspective. Money is always connected to the well-being of our neighbor. How do you, how do we earn our money? That's your first question that Brueggemann asks. How do we earn our money? How do you invest your money? How do you spend your money? How do you save your money? How do you give away your money? How do we give our way our money? Answer those questions and then look to see which responses lift up the well being of the neighbor and which do not which may actually be harmful to the neighbor. Are we investing our money in corporations and organizations that increase our funds at the risk of endangering lives or the environment? Are we spending our money at places that offer a living wage to their employees? Are we giving away our money to organizations that are making an actual impact in people's lives? Or are all those dollars being used to uphold the institution? Spend some time with those questions and ask yourself what feels right and what feels wrong. Do you need to restore a foundational concept of money in your own life in which money is a resource to care for your neighbor? Just think upon those things. Let's not return to the old money stories. Let's embrace a new one. Even though our impact may seem small when we do things like shop at fair trade stores or give a couple dollars to a nonprofit or over tip our waiter, those actions do make a difference. And they help nurture in us that new money story that is healthier, that is life-giving, and that is restorative. Amen.
just want to remind you that we do have community meeting after worship. Um, also tonight at 5 15 in the church parking lot, we will have a baby shower for Aaron and Andrea Huffman. They're welcoming their third child next month. So come and join us outside for that. And then at six o'clock, we'll have our pride worship service in the parking lot. Um, I really want to encourage you to come out. We have multiple speakers from our congregation who are going to share their story or some of their insight about um, coming out as an LGBTQ person, uh, coming out as an ally, being a parent, um, marriage equality. So um, some of these are folks you've not heard from talk about this. So I really encourage you to be there. It'll be a mixture of their sharing um, and some music and some cupcakes from Kelly. So it's just going to be a, a really good time. Um, and we will not Facebook live that time because they are folks telling their personal stories. Um, and so we want to respect that. So come in person so you can hear, remember to park in the lot next door and bring a chair. Um, so you can sit in the lot. We're not going to, um, mark out spaces for you tonight. We're going to trust you to put your chair down and sit near people you're comfortable sitting with and to socially distance from others. Okay. Since we're outside. So please continue to be cautious. Um, but I hope to see you all there tonight. Um, and as I said earlier, we will be opening the building soon if everything continues to go as planned. Um, and I think a big piece of that is that next Sunday, we're going to try to have me live in the sanctuary. The band won't be live yet, but I will be live in the sanctuary. I think Madeline's going to work some of her skills and at least have me in there. So this may be your last time seeing me in this space and wouldn't that be exciting? <laughs> so um, I'm thrilled to be going back to the building and then for you to be there with me soon too. So um, I hope you have um, a blessed week, whether I see you tonight or not. Just know that um, we as a community um, are always connected and caring for one another. Um, I hope you carry that with you. Let us pray before our, our last song. God, as we go out today, may we open ourselves to you and those foundational truths of your gospel and of who you are. May they be restored to us that we are created out of love, that we are sustained out of love, that we are called to love, to love our neighbor, to love ourselves, and to help create your kingdom. Guide us in these days ahead. Amen. Peace ever, joy ever, following you. Light ever, love ever, radiating through. Hope ever, faith ever, strengthening you. Life ever, breath ever, nourishing you. Everywhere you go, may you always be home, and everyone you meet be messengers of peace. Let your light shine through, and your heart ever be true.
Surrounding you 